Survey, survey, survey. Survey, survey, survey. ACCP survey. ACCP survey. ACCP, 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 ACCP. Yes, the American College of Clinical Pharmacy has sent a member demographic survey. This is going to be boring, but we're going to watch it anyway. What is my current ACCP membership? I am a resident. Please identify my age. What is my gender? Indicate how many years it has been since you have earned the following degrees. Less than five. Um, I don't have a BS Farm, PhD, MPH, Master's in Research, MBA, or other Master's degree. I'd be pretty interested in getting... Ah, I'm not as interested in... Well, I'm kind of interested in MPH. Have you completed or in the process of completing a PGY-1? Yes. Have you completed or in the process of completing a PGY-2? Uh, I'm going to say yes, even though technically I'm... Am I in the process? I haven't started working, but I've matched and I'm going there. I guess I'm going to say yes. We'll just say yes. If you answered yes to question six, what was your focus? It's infectious diseases. There's Look at all of these different uh, areas of specialty focus. Administration, ambulatory care, cardiology, clinical informatics, clinical pharmaceutical sciences, clinical pharmacology, community pharmacy, critical care, drug development, drug information, emergency medicine, endocrinology, family medicine, geriatric hospice, internal medicine, managed care, nephrology, neurology, nuclear pharmacy, nutrition support, obstetrics, gynecology. I have never seen an obstetrics, gynecology specialist pharmacist. But I suppose it's possible. Oncology, outcomes research, pain management, patient safety, pediatrics, pharmacoeconomics, pharmacoepidemiology, pharmacogenomics, pharmacokinetics, pharmacometrics, pharmacotherapy, prim uh, pharmacy practice, primary care, psych primary care and family medicine. How different are those? Psychiatry, pulmonary, rheumatology, toxicology, translational research, transplantation, women's health, and other. Yes, this is a lot of different things that you can have pharmacists doing. Keep this in mind. Uh, have you completed a research fellowship? No. Please identify your primary employer. At present, academic institution. Um, my secondary employer, state or federal agency, VA. Please select the title that best describes your... Well, let's take a look real quick here at what the other options were. Uh, community pharmacy, contract research organization, home health care, hospital or health care system, long-term care consulting, managed care, private physician's office or group practice, pharmaceutical industry, self-employed, or other. Okay. Please select the title that best describes your primary. I'm a resident in training. Yay. Not just a resident, I'm a resident in training. If applicable, please select the... Uh, no, nothing, other, none of the above. Um, please identify your primary practice or professional setting and function. My primary practice is usually ambulatory care. Um, primarily, I suppose, yeah, if you add up all the days, mostly ambulatory care, secondarily education of students... Um, tertiary would be inpatient, which I guess falls under acute care. Yeah, I guess in acute care would be my tertiary, but by far ambulatory care is most of my hours. Uh, please provide the following information if applicable. Number of patient visits per month, 400. Um, I know that from my research study, and that's not... I could change that based on which site I'm at, but of the sites I was at the most, uh, which was an indigent care clinic, I know for sure, for sure, I know for sure that they have approximately 400 visits per month. Um, the two months that I studied, they had 393 and 395. So 400 is a nice round number. Please identify your professional interest areas. All right, well, I'm interested in adverse drug reactions. I'm interested in HIV. I'm interested in AMCARE, anti-COAG. I'm interested in cardiology. Um, I'm interested in drug abuse. I'm interested in drug interactions. I am interested in education. I'm interested in family medicine. Um, I'm interested in diabetes, which would be endocrinology, but I'm not going to click it. Um, let's see, herbal medicine. I like herbal medicine. I like to study it. I like infectious diseases. I like immunology. Do, 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 do. I love medical ethics. I'm a big fan. Nutrition. 
Uh, pain and palliative care. I like pharmacoeconomics. Pharmaco... Uh, I do like the idea of pharmacogenomics, but I am not as heavily into it as I thought I would be. Um, pharmacotherapy. And toxicology. That seems like quite a lot, right? Yeah. Please identify your professional interest areas. I'm a resident. I'm interested in a lot of things. Which of the following? I have none of the above. So this is a board-certified pharmacotherapy specialist, a board-certified oncology pharmacist, a board-certified nutrition support pharmacist, a board-certified nuclear pharmacist, a board-certified psychiatry pharmacist, I think, or psychiatric pharmacist, something like that, board-certified ambulatory care pharmacist, and I do not hold. This, it's interesting that all the rest of these are pharmacists, except the BCPS, the board-certified pharmacotherapy specialist. Um, they didn't want to say pharmacotherapy pharmacist, I guess, BCPP. This is by far the most common, BCPS. Um, up until recently, I believe it was a year or two ago, they finally added BCACP. Um, and a lot of people who were previously BCPS are now BCACP. They wanted to be in ambulatory care, but the closest thing was just general pharmacotherapy. This is like the catch-all. Um, it's only if you want to more specialize into oncology, nutrition, nuclear pharmacy, psychiatric pharmacy, or ambulatory care that you move outside of the BCPS, um, lab well, I say labeling, certification. They are considering adding additional certifications. I know pediatric pharmacy has been brought up. There was also um, talk about maybe some infectious disease in the future. Uh, cardiology is a separate Right now, if you're BCPS, you can get what's called AQ or additional qualifications in cardiology or in infectious diseases. Those two I know for sure because I have one pharmacist preceptor who's a uh, BCPS AQ cardiology and another one who's BCPS AQ infectious diseases. And that requires extra work on top of the BCPS to get that added qualification. Um, I Oh, well, here you go. The cardiology and infectious disease added qualifications. So way to anticipate what the thing's going to mention. So I, apparently those are the only two added qualifications you can get at the moment. Please indicate any additional certifications you may hold. BCADM. Um, this one is not as common because you it's not um, reimbursable. If you're a certified diabetes educator, you can actually bill insurances as a, as a CDE. Um, BCADM, I believe, you can, unless the a special insurance company decides to, this is not generally billable, so it's not as common. Uh, one of my professors was a certified geriatric pharmacist. Another one was a CLS, which is the certified lipid specialist or lipidology specialist. Um, I don't know what DBAT stands for. Uh, What's funny is approaching toxicology from a non-medical standpoint, my undergraduate was toxicology from a forensics crime investigation standpoint. Um, so I'm not quite offhand recalling what DBAT stands for, but I'm none of the above. Um, I have a certificate, but it's not a certification. So I could fill in that I have completed the American Pharmacists Association's um, patient-centered diabetes care certificate program, but that's not a certification. I've also completed a American Pharmacists Association certificate training in immunizations, vaccine administration, but please indicate other professional pharmacy-related organizations of which you're a current member. Okay, so there's a lot more here than I actually ever knew about. So I am a member of AACP because I currently teach at a school pharmacy. Um, never heard of AAPS, ACCP, a different one. So there's the American College of Clinical Pharmacists, then there's the American College of Clinical Pharmacology, and then there's the American College of Chest Physicians. So there's a lot of ACCPs, um, but no, Academy of Managed Care, APHA, yes, American Society of Clinical Oncology, no, American Society of Consultant Pharmacists, actually, yes, I am. Actually, this is the American Society of Consultant Pharmacists. I'm not sure what a pharmacist does. Maybe they practice pharmacology. Uh, American Society for Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics. I haven't heard of them. American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Yes. Uh, College of Psychiatric and Neurologic Pharmacists. I've heard of them. Drug Information Association. Have not. HOPA. Have not. 
NCPA, yes, although I'm technically no longer a member, so I'll uncheck that. National Home Infusion, nope, never heard of you. National Pharmaceutical Association, have not heard of you either. How do you differ from the American Pharmacists Association, which used to be known as the American Pharmaceutical Association? I don't know. Pediatric Pharmacy, I'm actually a member of the Pediatric Pharmacy Advocacy Group, if it'll let me click, thank you. Society of Critical Care, no. Society of Infectious Disease Pharmacists, I want to join, but you have to be kind of uh, put up for membership by a current member. Um, so hopefully I'll be a member of that after my next year's rotation, my next year residency. Who pays my dues? Me. I pay my dues. Thank you. Have you? No, I have not implemented a specialty clinic. So I'm not going to answer yes. Um, I have participated in specialty clinics, but I have not implemented specialty clinics. I have participated in a pharmacist-run anticoagulation clinic. Pharmacist-run diabetes clinic. Pharmacist-run hypertension clinic. Pharmacist-run lipid clinic. Pharmacist run medication management clinic, pharmacotherapy clinic, and smoking cessation clinic, um, of which some of them are technically interprofessional. Some of them are both pharmacist run and interprofessional. Where I am currently, it's run. Um, it's the clinic is sponsored slash run by a nursing school um, for nurse practitioners, and the, most of the providers they do have a couple physicians that come in, but most of the providers are nurse practitioners. And uh, they run things for the most part. Uh, so that would be an interprofessional diabetes clinic. There's a nutritionist on, uh, on the grounds. And uh, there's, of course, us as the pharmacists there as well. Do you currently practice in a specialty clinic? Yes. Please identify. Okay. Where I currently, I'm here. Technically, as of right now. So I'll just click that one and let it be an interprofessional diabetes clinic as far as the survey is concerned. Um, I could totally click that, 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 and let it go that way too, but I don't want to be misleading. I mean, either way, it's kind of technically misleading. Um, but right now, I currently practice in an interprofessional diabetes clinic. In the past two years, have you served on a PNT or formulary committee? No, I have presented to a PNT committee. Um, the VA calls theirs the MUC. In the past years, have you presented? Yes, yes, I have presented. Thank you very much. I actually presented on anticoagulation and the management of subtherapeutic uh, INRs in warfarin patients. In the past years, have you participated as a member of any IRB or research review committee? No, although I have submitted my research project to an institutional review board, which gained, I don't know how to phrase it. It was approved by the IRB because it was unnecessary to be approved by the IRB. Um, my research was exempt from approval because I'm not using, I'm not exposing patients. I'm just doing chart review and the uh, patient information is de-identified. So I'm, I personally am the only person who sees the patient's name, um, but all the data and even uh, the professor who's right now doing the data analysis for me uh, doesn't see any patient names. So as a de-identified retrospective chart review, um, I was technically waived for IRB approval, but I still submitted it through the IRB uh, in order to, you know, get waived for, for legit, yo. Does your current pharmacy practice provide provisions for, wow, I love that. Does your current pharmacy practice provide provisions for prescriptive authority as part of a collaborative drug therapy management agreement? Institutional, yes, yes, it does. Um, it does. So thank you. I'm happy. Is your current pharmacy practice supported through a... Uh, yes. And yes. So I practice currently right now, I practice at two different sites. One is that interprofessional diabetes center and the other is the VA hospital. Um, so through that center, we have CDTM with a, I think it's technically a group of physicians because there's more than one physician that goes there. And so I'm going to pretend that it's a group. You know what? I'm going to say this instead. I'm going to say it's a single physician because I do believe it's one physician's name that goes on everything. And then through the VA, that's an institution that grants uh, prescriptive privileging. The services in question are applied to both. Um, at the outpatient diabetes center, it's outpatients. Right now at the VA, I'm doing inpatient. So it's technically both out inpatients and outpatients. Um, in the course of your practice, how often are you consulted by physicians regarding the choice of therapeutic agents for patients? Uh, this is going to be a little bit harder. 
at the VA, I'm there once a week, and I tend to get um, some consultation, so it would be weekly. <laughs> but I'm only there one day a week. Um, at the at the diabetes center so far, um, it's happened once, but I haven't. I've only seen three patients so far. Uh, so I guess weekly. I'll do weekly. In the course of your practice, how often are you consulted by nurses? Okay, well, technically, the physician, I'm not seeing talking to physicians for the most part, although there was a physician there today, and we talked to him about drug therapy for a patient. So, yay. Okay, so how often are you consulted by nurses? I'm going to say weekly again, because why not? In the past two years, indicate how many number of times you provided in-service programs or other forms of clinical education to healthcare providers outside the pharmacy profession. Um, in the past two years, well, I provided um, once for nurse, well, not once. I've done nursing and physicians at the Indian Health Service. Um, I've done at the VA for nurses and physicians, well, actually mostly physicians there. So that's two. Um, I did CE, but that was pretty much just all pharmacists. So I'm not going to count that. Have I com presented to anyone else? I'll just say twice. That's one to three. To healthcare providers outside the pharmacy profession. I've talked to nurses in that a couple times, but I mean, doing an actual in-service program, for sure I've done tw two of them. In the past two years, how many times have you presented a poster, abstract, or paper, or served as a speaker at a national meeting or professional organization? Well, let's see. Two years running at ASHP for posters um, at a national meeting of a professional organization. So two. And other healthcare profession, um, none. I don't think I presented outside of the pharmacy profession. So that'll work for me. All right, let's click done. And that's it. I don't get no prizes or nothing. Well, until next time, bye-bye.